Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about why worry? Why worry about the other guy? Some things to think about. So if you're in business, getting into business, or heck, just want to spend some time with me, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. We are nearing our six year mark. That's nuts. Six years. It's crazy. Anyway, um, so uh, thank you for staying with. If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy everything. Hopefully it's not too terrible and you go back and binge on everything. Hundreds of episodes, hundreds of hours of content, uh, all there for your binging and um, involving yourself more and more in the industry. And shameless plug of the day, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you like the content or you think, hey, this guy maybe could help in some way, or you just want to give me a virtual high five, let me put your orders in for you. That's what I do. Um, I put orders in. I help people with questions. I want to be your rep, your personal account rep. costs you nothing extra to do that. Um, My number directs 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. So text me, call me, whatever. Um, I'm usually gone on the weekends. We don't ship on the weekends. So if you send me something at like Saturday uh, at one in the morning and then all of a sudden at 1.30 you put it in because you're like, I can't wait anymore. It literally doesn't make any sense to put an order in uh, until Monday anyway, it doesn't ship. So don't worry about that. Um, Let me put your orders in. Let me be a rep just because that's what I do. And that's how I make cheddar. So do that. And you're a nerd in window cleaning like I am. So go and get a window cleaner um, magazine subscription. It's called the American Window Cleaner Magazine. It is the only and longest running magazine for window cleaners. It's all about the industry. Great articles, amazing pictures, sweet stickers you can put on everything. All industry specific, all custom. Um, And uh, also would do me a big favor. Just go to awcmag.com, get yourself a subscription. Uh, The magazine's like $69 for the entire year. And yes, it's a real paper magazine that gets shipped to you every single month. So do that and uh, be completely rad. Anyway, so this is an interesting topic. Today we're talking about why worry. I see so many people post, and I post daily questions all the time, by the way, if you're not following me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, YouTube. Uh, I have a separate channel from the WCR YouTube channel. Anyway, I posted a question, and it was like, what's the biggest um, problem with the industry? And I just got a whole bunch of people complaining about issues that shouldn't they shouldn't be worried about. And it's cool. I asked the question, definitely answer. Uh, this is not against anybody, one person. But I get calls probably every week or two with something along these lines. And I got specific customers that I've been dealing with for years that uh, complain every time I talk to them about all these other things that are coming in. And that's why they're not doing as good. And that's why this. And that's why this. And I'm telling you, don't worry. The problems that we're going to talk about today are not your problem. And there are things that you're not even going to necessarily have to fight with. But people panic. People panic about things that they can't control. And here is the the premise of worry. And if you want to make a t-shirt out of this, feel free. But there's two things in this world. There's things you can control. And there's things that you can't control. Why worry about the things you can't control? And why worry about the things you can control? Because change it. If it's a problem for you, change it. The sun at some point will explode and we will all die and humanity will cease to exist. And That's scientific. It's a fact. But there is not one thing that you or I can do to stop that. So why is that a worry? It's going to happen when it happens. Nothing changes, right? Now, obviously, that's a morbidly crazy version. But in the same sense is why worry about things you can't change. But if it's something you can, then it shouldn't be a worry. Just change it. 
If you are looking at it and going, ah, oh, man, well, I'm worried I'm going to have a heart attack early. Change your, your health style or your, your lifestyle, your health, your blah, 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 right? When it comes to window cleaning or any type of business, it's the same concept. And these are the main things I hear people complain about, and they don't have anything to do with you. And the first one's lower price. Ah, man, these guys coming in, man. Dude, they're half of what I am. Okay, let me ask you a question. Here is the golden question for the week. And please, if you're watching on YouTube, go and answer that question. Answer that question. Think about this question. Think about the answer. Talk about it with your staff if you have them. And give me the real answer. Because this will change your world. But here's a question. There's you. And there's another guy. We'll call him Bill. You and Bill both are window cleaners. You're both standing there. You've not said one thing, I'm the customer. Bill says, I'll clean your windows for $99. You say, I'll clean your windows for $199. Which one would you choose? Without knowing anything else, the only information you've been given is price. That's it. So the only thing that can determine anything with your decision is price. If you only tell them price, that's all they can go by. Now, here's the other question. This is the question that you need to answer. If I'm a customer and you're at 99 and that guy's at 199, why would I hire you? Why would I double the price to hire you? Now, that question seems like a pretty, uh, you know, harsh statement. But people worry too much on price. They worry too much on price and they forget that price isn't what matters, it's value. Now there's a percentage, you know, three to 5% of people will always buy the cheapest forever because they haven't been burned. But if you've ever bought a tool, you know the cheapest is not the way. You know in business the cheapest is not the way. I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday who is looking to get workers comp because they're getting to that point where they have to start having workers' comp and they were flabbergasted at how expensive it was. Like, I don't know how people stay in business. It's because they're not charging $30 an hour like you are. They're at $80 an hour because they're doing things the right way. That's why things are so expensive. But when you put the two together, you and Bill, you're double the price, why would somebody choose you? If the answer even to you or your staff or your anything if there's no answer and you're like man i i don't know i i would i would buy the cheaper one then drop your price cut your price in half and now that's the only thing you're ever going to go on is price hopefully you make it hopefully you can struggle through business ownership and after uh you know two years when you just can't make any money and it doesn't make sense you'll go find another job Cool, do that. The harsh truth about price and value is if you can't justify why somebody would pay your price, then neither can they. People are not winning work and bids and customers because of their price. It's because of the lack of value. Now. I'll say this because there will be, and by the way, if you want to angrily text me at uh, 2 in the morning, 862-312-2026, I get texts, literally weird texts in the middle of the night. Um, I have a fake beef with Steve-O. It's one of them. Um, he's hashtag two clip. I'm hashtag one clip. Represent. And um, people will literally just text me like, what's your problem with Steve-O, man? Uh, it's funny. I talk to Steve like a hundred times a day, obviously. Um, so we shoot stories back and forth. Anyway, back to the subject. If you can't figure out why somebody would go with you, they can't. You haven't shown them why. Now, with that, every single thing in the entire history of man purchases. Purchases. Everything from cars to food, to fill in the blank, everything you possibly can buy, everything has an expensive and a non-expensive. And you know, 
there's a value in what the most expensive thing is. If you're into tools, there's an expensive tool. If you're into cars, there's expensive cars. Nobody ever goes, a Bentley, a Rolls Royce. <laughs> Why would I buy that? No. At that point, it's like, okay, well, I see the value in that car, but it's beyond my price. It's, you know, a twenty or $30,000 car or a $300,000 car. You can't be the $300,000 car always when something's so cheap because you have to find your customer, right? But Rolls Royce exists because the people who look for Rolls Royces are in that market. They're not advertising to you and I. You have to find your target market and advertise to them in the way that they can talk. But I'm telling you the difference between $99 and $199, not any person who is paying for a luxury service cannot afford your pricing. Now, if you said it was, you know, $1,900 versus their $99, you see that margins go and there's very, very few that would go that route. But when you're there in what you should be and what normal market somewhere, those dollars don't matter when you explain why someone goes with you. Not the reasons either that you think. Well, I'm fully insured and that guy doesn't know what he's doing and I do. What do they want to see? Show them value. Don't worry about price because that guy's not going to be in business. There is nobody who's been in business with a staff and a facility and new trucks and insurance that's around that is undercutting everybody and they're around forever. It's a bucket bob, somebody who's making beer money and they will disappear and 10 more people will come in their, in their place. You can't change their price. You can only change you. So instead of worrying about them, worry about why somebody would choose you. And if you get the why, that why is your USP. That is what you push. There's only one if it's unique. If somebody else is in your area, or there's other window cleaners out there, understand that the $99 guy, he's not standing on the same platforms as you are. Be seen. People are so worried about this other guy, but that's the guy who's out there putting yard signs that say $99. Well, if somebody's really cheap and trying to find a luxury service at a bargain price, which they're not, it's just not that way. If it's only price, then they'll go that route. It's on a freaking yard sign. But you need to be seen. You need to advertise and let people know because here's the thing, if they find you, more than likely they're not gonna find the other guy. They're not gonna see you and go, oh wow, well look at this company that is genuinely amazing and their website is blowing me away and their trucks look awesome and hey, look at this other guy who's driving around in a 1989 Caprice Classic with a uh, grocery bag of towels. You, you don't find those people because they can't pay to advertise. You be seen and not worry about the people who can't be seen. That's their problem. It's something that you should not worry about. Now, obviously, advertising is a whole other thing. You got to do it right. You have to spend the money smart. You have to do split testing. You have to do all that. But be found. You have a great ability in being that you're a luxury business that offers an amazing value and... You charge a price, that means you have money for marketing. Use it. Use it wisely. Be seen. Be out there. When somebody signs up with you, show them the experience they get with you. And now they're proven. They'll never go to that other guy. The other guy with the yard sign? I'll tell you, no one, not ever in the history of ever, has somebody bought a Rolls Royce for sale from a yard sign. Uh, 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 a simple yard sign somebody stuck up on the corner of a busy intersection said, Rolls Royces, what? Nobody's buying that. Nobody's buying most credible things like that. If you have a yard sign and your yard signs look great, cool. If your yard sign looks awesome next to one that doesn't look awesome and it's handwritten in Sharpie, who are they calling? You've instantly shown them the value just by the way the, the, the sign looks. Now, I know signs work, that's not where I'm going at, but I'm just saying in some of these things, you have to understand what we sell and who we sell to. Do yard signs work? Sure. If that is your best, again, angry uh, messages, feel free to contact me. If that yard signs are your best form of advertising, it's not because yard signs for you work so well, it's because your other forms of advertising uh, have been done wrong. Right? Understand who we're talking to 
And if you put a yard sign up on the corner of, you know, 3rd and 5th Street, only people who see that are people who are driving on 3rd and 5th Street. Your target market is not the people who are driving on 3rd and 5th Street. If you put it outside a subdivision or something, great, you're targeting that subdivision, right? But understand, if you're sending out a Facebook ad, you're contacting thousands, tens of thousands of people. That ad should show better than a yard sign, right? It's not because yard signs are amazing. It's because the other ones have failed you somehow. But be seen. The other guy won't be seen as much as you. You don't worry about that guy. A bucket bob comes in and there's a, we always, everybody's got him. When we did route, we always had guys that would go around and they would do any storefront for five bucks. There was just a guy, uh, the guy that uh, um, we had was, uh, gosh, Reginald or Ronald? Reginald? Anyway, super nice guy. I met him. But he just was chill. I think he was like on social security or something and just like did stuff for cash and cool. I didn't, he's not my competition, right? There is no fancy, you got a fancy steakhouse in your in your neighborhood or your town, right? Think of it right now. That one. Yes, that one. That place doesn't go, oh man, what are we going to do? McDonald's is selling cheeseburgers for a buck fifty. Oh gosh, we got to change our price. We're charging $20 for a cheeseburger and fries. It, you can get it for five there. Oh man, we have to, they don't say that. If you look at a McDonald's burger and fries and you look at a steakhouse burger and fries, they're both burgers and fries. Now there's value in the quality of the food of one. There's value in the ambiance, right? The atmosphere, the lights turn down low and the waiters are there to, to, to everything you could possibly, the experience is their value. But no one ever who's owned that restaurant has taken their $20 cheeseburger and fries and went, oh man, McDonald's is at five bucks. Man, we got to drop our price to $5. They're going to take all the, they're going to win all different people. It doesn't mean that McDonald's isn't getting customers, but it means that the same customers who are getting McDonald's, when they want something else, they'll go there. They've seen the value and go there. I don't, this isn't the thing. It's just, I, I, I don't go to McDonald's myself. It's not, uh, I'm not a fan, but I don't go to McDonald's and I will go buy a $20 cheeseburger. It's not because I want to go sit in a stuffy place, or whatever, but it's the atmosphere. It's the experience. It's the same thing. Just because it exists does not mean it affects you. Just because a Honda Accord exists does not mean a Rolls Royce doesn't sell what they want to sell. It doesn't mean that their value is any less. It doesn't mean that ever did they take a Lamborghini and go, we got to lower these prices. Man, we are just not, we want to sell more. We're going to need to lower the prices. Understand there will always be that three to 5% that only wants the cheapest. They, they, they don't care that there's mud and drips and everything else because the guy showed up and smelled like, you know, weed and cigarettes. Like they don't care, but that's not your customer. That's not most of the people that we deal with. So why is it ever a worry in your head? Right? The, the, the next guy's not experienced. I love this one. Man. As a schmuck, uh, or as um, some people call me, a uh, internet guru, I put content out. That's what I do. I mean, I put content out multiple platforms, multiple times a day. YouTube, I do WCR and Facebook groups and TikTok. I do it everywhere and I try to help as much as possible and put out as much info and, and just viewpoints on things. So yeah, I'm one of those guys. But the new guy is not destroying you. The new guy is not... Five new guys come in to your market. That does not destroy you. Those are the new guys. The big thing that I love always and what drives me so mad is that people think that it's a problem that new guys get in the industry this guy just started business this year <laughs> he's doing windows he doesn't even know what he's doing of course not 
either did you. There's not one of you out there, me included, that knew somehow the ins and outs in every aspect of window cleaning before you decided to be a window cleaner. If you work for somebody else or you started your own company. Nobody's born with that knowledge. What do you do? Watch some YouTube videos? That's what you're doing. You're listening to a podcast. You were there. Did you think at any time, the day you started, the month you started, you went, oh man, <laughs> these big guys are worried about me. No. You were just trying to keep your head above water and figure the whole thing out. Your pricing was wrong. Your quality was maybe wrong. Your focuses were wrong. The experience lacked. There's so many things that are wrong with these new guys. Why in the heck are you worried about somebody new? And why is that a problem for you that they're new or they don't know what they're doing? No one knows what they're doing. Well, they think they do. Yes. Everybody thinks they know what they're doing. That's the point of business. If you go to somebody and go, hey, um, just so you know, I don't know anything about this business, but I'll do it. Like No one's hiring you. Everybody, including you, including me, including everybody, has faked it until they made it in business. You have to be confident. It doesn't affect you. That doesn't affect you. Don't be worried about the other guy who's new. Who doesn't know? He doesn't have any experience. Man, this guy doesn't know. All these new guys. I got people literally tell me to my face. Well, on the phone because nobody would say it to my face. But that I am somehow helping destroy the industry because I help new people learn window cleaning. That's so sad. That's so sad. If you truly think that, your business is failing and that's why your numbers are going down and crashing and every year you make less than you did the year before. It's not the new guy, it's you. Now I'm not talking to any of you people who listen, obviously. But we're talking tr harsh realities here when somebody looks at it and we get people who their business is doing, they're doing worse than they did last year and worse before the year that. And they've been in business for 20 years and it's the worst year they ever had. And they go, oh, it's because all these new guys and you're teaching these new guys. How there's always new guys. And for every year there's a new guy, there's another guy going on a business. There's a guy who couldn't cut it as the $99 guy. There's a guy who is retiring, who was a one-man show that you didn't even know about, who had a great group of customers that he serviced for 25 years and decides now, you know what, he's going to Boca Raton. The industry is cyclical. Everything is cyclical. Every piece is cyclical. Your customers are cyclical. You will not have one customer for 200 years if your company was around that long. They died. They moved. They went into a retirement home. They did something. They what? They they just you cannot have 100% of everything all the time. It's always cyclical. You're always getting new customers. Hopefully you're getting two new customers to one customer you lost. Right? You still want the growth. But these guys that go on the internet and they go, hey, you know what? You guys are teaching all these new guys. Now my market's flooded. Nobody wants to hire me. Because you, you haven't shown them why they want to hire you. Just because you've been doing it 20 years doesn't mean I want to hire you. Don't look at the new guy as the problem. Look at you as not competing with the new guy. Right? They got so many things to figure out. They got to even be good at business. 90% of businesses fail. It's probably even more than that. I don't know what the statistic is. 90% of businesses fail. It's because they can't run a business. Why are you worried about that guy? Why, why are you worried about that guy? It's like, it's like, it's like a college runner. I'm like, oh, man. This new six-year-old, he's fast. What? This isn't, doesn't do anything for you. That, that's a whole other thing. Why, why, why work with those guys? He's got a lot of things. He's got to make sure he's healthy and does all this other stuff before it even gets to you. Too many guys is not ever a bad thing. Yes, there can be flooded areas, which mean you need to rise more to the top. But that's where the USP comes in. If there's only one of you, there's only one of you. There isn't 10 of you. Because then you're not unique. What makes you unique? The last one I want to talk about is bad work. 
This you see a lot more with water fed. People are like, that's why I don't use water fed, because these people are like, you better not be using that water broom. Anybody can do crap work. Anybody can do it with a squeegee. Anybody can do it with a water fed pole. Anybody can paint a house bad. Anybody can wash a window bad. It doesn't matter how they do it. But the thing is, is that your brain tells you how a squeegee works. It's very, very easy to comprehend how a squeegee works. And if I hand you or some guy off the street a squeegee and a scrubber and I say, clean that window, do you think he's going to do amazing? No. He's going to start in the middle. He's, gonna, he's just going to make it look awful. And he's going to come at, ah, man, you guys make it look so easy. And yeah, I, 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 I got to practice a lot more on this thing. I just, uh, and you go, yep, all right, cool. The next guy is you hand him a water fed pole. A water fed pole, by the way, if it's zero or under 10 out of the system, scientifically, I mean, math doesn't lie. If there's zero minerals in the water, there's zero chance it's spotting from the water. People go, ah, there's spots all over the place. The thing doesn't work. No, you did it wrong. You did it wrong. Those guys that you're getting work from, from water fed pole, don't, don't, don't go, yeah, of course, that's why I don't do water fed. No, educate the customer and be like, hey, remember we have 100% satisfaction guarantee and we use the best equipment on the market. I use this every single day. I love it, it's phenomenal. It will clean your windows amazingly, but remember if I'm completely done and you're not happy, just like with a squeegee, you let me know we will make it look perfect. Don't go, oh man, that doesn't work because you don't understand it. This is a phone. I don't understand it, but I know it works. If I, if I call somebody right now on this phone and all of a sudden they hang up, I don't go, oh man, cell phones don't work. No. I've used it every day. I get it. I'm like, ah, well, I understand it's a network or they dropped or their call or their stuff. I understand why it didn't work and I understand why it will work. Same thing with Waterfed. Don't let bad work dictate what you think gear or equipment is. Now, with that being said, tools are tools. Like if you want to use an accelerator, do it. You don't have to. If you want to use Ettore over Unger, do it. You don't have to. If you want to use Waterfed or don't want to use Waterfed, do it. You don't have to. Tools are tools. But I'm telling you, you can get crap work. And I've gotten work from other window cleaners who weren't using Waterfed poles and were using just squeegees and scrubbers. They did crap work. I got the job. Sweet. Don't let that be a worry of yours. Don't let that tell you that something isn't working or the way you're doing something is wrong when you know that it's right, right? The whole show, this one, as I uh, have gotten uh, heated a little bit, but it's just things that people worry about that they shouldn't worry about, right? There is nothing to worry about if you can't control the thing. The only animal in the entire planet that worries is humans. We're the only thing that has that in our brain that worries. You know what happens when a deer wakes up in the morning? They don't wake up and go, oh man, today I'm going to get eaten by a lion, I bet it. They're always looking. They wake up and they start eating. That's their thing. They're not worrying about a thing that didn't happen. You are. You're worried about something happening that you have no control of. The sun explodes, right? The, the, the axis of the earth changes and the polar caps melt. And the... If you take that all into effect and you look at all of the negative things that could possibly ever happen, you don't even take a look at the likelihood of the things that are going to happen. Every one of you drives every single day. And 99.9% .9 of you are cool with it. You hop in your car and go, cool. Tens of thousands of people die a day in auto accidents. Like, what is it? 10? No. I forget how that is. 10,000 a year. Anyway, look up the statistic. A drastic number die a year. 
It's like 100,000 people die in just traffic accidents a year. I think it's the number, something along those lines. Maybe. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter. But you get in a car and you go, yeah, because it's more likely that I'm not going to die. When people get on a plane because they are not flying to and from work every single day and five times on the weekend and blah, 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 blah. You've never met a guy who travels for business that's on a plane three times a week scared of flying. The people who are scared of flying are the people who don't fly very much, right? They're worried about a plane falling when statistically it's not. But you're worrying about a thing that didn't happen. And then even though when something doesn't happen but you worried about it, you had the same pain as if it did happen even when it didn't. If you're worried, oh man, these low price guys are going to get me all they're going to, they got you. You've spent time. But if you're like, oh man, it sucks, their price is super low. All right, let's focus on what I got going. Boom, boom, boom. I can change this and do this. And that's what you're doing. You didn't, you didn't get an effect, affected by a situation that didn't even happen. Anyway, it's up to you to decide on what you worry about. I can't tell you what makes sense, but I want to just lighten it up a little bit like that. So if you have anything that you're worried about, think about if it's something you can control or not. And if it's not, don't worry about it. Worry about what you can control and control that. Ah, all right. Anyway, that's the show. If you're new, remember I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. It is what I do. It is how I make money and it is how you can give me a virtual high five of awesomeness. And by the way, I still have Cool Kids stickers. I kind of stopped like pushing those. But if you order from me, tell me you want a Cool Kids sticker. It is a limited edition Cool Kids sticker that only people who buy from me have. Uh, we are on version three right now, um, but let me know. Also, go and get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine because it's awesome and you're awesome and it would be a great pairing and then you can also have something to read on the toilet. So go to awcmag.com, get a subscription. Uh, say what's up to me. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's WCR Nation Jersey. WCR Jersey, WCR Nation. Jersey, WCR Nation? I don't know. It's a stupid name. Find it. Subscribe. A bunch of videos, content starting to go there. Uh, I want to have a bunch of stuff there. So go and do that. But more importantly, until next week, don't worry, man. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.